Hi there, Agile friends. I'll come in here just with a quick note to let you know that the Agile Online Summit 2022 is coming soon. To know more, check out bit.ly forward slash AOS 2022. That's all one word, all lowercase, bit.ly forward slash AOS 2022. Now, stick around to the end of the episode if you want to know more. But for now, on to the show. Hello, everybody. Welcome to our Success Thursday this week with Ruta Hardikar. Hey, Ruta, welcome back. Hello. Hi, everyone. So, Ruta, on Thursdays, we dive into what success looks like. Uh, But before we go into that, we do want to know what's your favorite retrospective format and why? Oh, that's my favorite question. (laughs) Uh, To be honest, retrospective is uh, my most favorite Agile event, you know. As a Scrum Master, you should not be biased, but that's the event I feel uh, we can do a lot of creativity and it's for the team, by the team, right? So um, I would like to say a few things before actually jumping onto my favorite exercise is when I facilitate retrospective exercise, I make why I make this statement very clear. Why do we need to have retrospective is basically this gives us opportunity to inspect and adapt, reflect on the feedback. As a scrum master, um, I want to coach them that, you know, what is the importance of relentless improvement and how it's going to help us. Also need to hold everyone accountable for our improvement action items. So what I typically do is I try to sense the temperature of the room right, in the last sprint or iteration, how things went, what were some of the impediments that team ran into, what are some of the things that that uh, worked for us or helped us, right? So throughout the sprint, I try to, I try to make that judgment through our, through our daily stand-ups or, you know, our, our daily scrum calls that, how is the temperature, you know? Accordingly, I try to design retrospective exercise. The intention here is to get the best inputs and true inputs from all the team members. Also, a few things, right? I try to uh, keep changing these exercises, right? So the typical pattern, I'll start with icebreaker. I'm a huge fan of icebreakers. You know, that gives us opportunity to, again, know each other, what we like, what are our hobbies, what is something that we are thankful for, what are our failures about our families and everything, right? Again, I have I've mentioned this in previous episodes that it's very important to be a team from just group of people. An icebreaker exercise would give us that opportunity to learn more about. We would start with icebreaker and then um, we'll jump on to the exercise. I have tried several different exercises, but my you know, the go-to exercise is four L's. So what you liked, what you learned, what was lacking, and what you long for, wish for, right? That's my go-to. Uh, the reason I like this exercise the most is because uh, that helps us identifying what is something that team liked. We should keep doing that, you know? What is something that was lacking? You know, how uh, we we can improve it next time. Instead of saying that, you know, what was lacking, it doesn't create too much of a negative emotion, but also gives us an opportunity to identify, you know, what we can improve next time. Learned, you know, this is very important. Um, I strongly believe in continuous learning. We are a student for life, you know. So it's important to share our learnings with the group so that others can learn from it, share their experiences, and we are not just learning by ourselves, but we are growing the community. We are we are sharing our learnings and helping someone we don't know, you know. So uh, learned is something that helps us identify how the sprint was in terms of learning. And what do you wish for, right? So that tells us that in future, these are the opportunities that we can work towards. So that's my one of the favorite exercise, but I have tried multiple exercises. Uh, When we are in the holiday season, I try to customize them for the holiday questions that, you know, if it's winter, then uh, what was your hot chocolate? Yeah. What was the hot chocolate for the sprint? That means everybody loves hot chocolate in the winter, right? Especially if if you're in Detroit or, you know, you're somewhere cold. Yes. Oh, yes. Yes. 
So try to customize it, put your creativity out there. There are several different tools. I try to use different tools, not keep it monotonous. And the reason behind that is, uh, unless and until you try these different exercises, you don't know that, you know, engaging part is very important. So when there are different exercises, I feel that it's easy to engage. If it's the same exercise every time, team members already know that. Hey, yeah, they kind of you, get you repetitive. You just let yeah. it go. Yeah, exactly. And then, you know, after a while, they feel that, do we really need retrospective? I mean, we are good. We already know what we liked, what we didn't like. And, you know, when we keep it interactive, it's it's more fun. Most important thing is have, have fun in the retrospective. You know, this is the time where you can be yourself, share what worked, what didn't work, and come up with action items. So sometimes, you know, back in the office, we used to do it in the cafeteria, just on the table, have a sip of coffee and discuss or, or do it over happy hour. Just uh, create that open atmosphere where everybody is relaxed, but at the same time. And actually that, that reminds me that ever, any relaxed moment is a great moment for reflection, right? Like and we, we don't even need to do it in the retro, of course, you know, do it in the retro also, but, uh, you, you know, like a, a chit chat that happens just before the daily stand up as everybody waits for everybody else to come in and you can ask a question that invites reflection, right? Yes, for sure. Absolutely. And all of this we do because obviously, ultimately, we want to help the teams and be successful ourselves. So in order to do that, Ruta, though, we do need to discuss what does success mean. So share with us, what's your definition of success for a scrum master? I joke about it, but that's actually true that, uh, you know, when your teams no longer need you, that's your success as a scrum master. <laughs> and the reason behind that is as a scrum master, we want our teams to be self-organized and cross-functional. I stress on self-organized where you know, they exactly know what is the focus of each event, okay? how to deal with dependencies, impediments, uh, whom to escalate it, when to escalate it, or um, how to discuss what is working for us, not working for us, how to come up with those improvement action items, and holding each other accountable to work on those action items, right? So just to summarize all these events, right? Also, uh, how to come up with the priorities? When is the right time to prioritize your backlog? When to keep it ready? What all details need to go in the backlog, in the story, in the feature, you know, whatever work item you're working on, right? So I feel that as a scrum master, when we coach them the value of events, uh, different scrum values, principles, or say safe core principles or, or values, right? And how to implement them or, or how to create that mindset that can help you in your day-to-day -day job. That's, that's, I feel, our primary responsibility. So when we feel that, you know, Scrum Masters no longer need us, meaning they are self-organized, they can run their events on own, they, are, they have understood the focus, uh, there is a great trust and team bonding in the team. So they are openly talking about uh, what is working for them, or their impediments, pain points. Uh, they have a good autonomy where they can say that, hey, we cannot pull this into a sprint because, you know, we don't have capacity, right? Let's push it to next sprint. So having that discussion with the product owner, that negotiation that can we, can we deprioritize this instead of prioritizing the other one, you know, having this type of conversation when we feel that they are comfortable. I think that's the success of Scrum Master, that your teams are working uh, successfully on their own, there is great trust team bonding and they're delivering value constantly. So one of the things that I hear in, in what you describe as a, as a team that has, uh, I think, surpassed the need to have a, an ever-present scrum master, I guess, would be one way to describe it. Uh, in a lot of those uh, signs or behaviors or patterns, it, it sounds to me that it's a little bit like the team is taking ownership. Uh, so it's not just that they don't need the Scrum Master, it's that they take ownership. They say, this is my problem. This is not the Scrum Master's problem. This is my problem. I may even ask for help from the Scrum Master, but it's my problem, 
right? Like if if I if I think the priorities are uh, going to affect our ability to deliver, I will talk to the PO and I will try to negotiate the priorities with the PO to get to a better solution or a shared solution. Is that what you mean? Like this aspect of taking ownership? Yeah, very well uh, articulated, right? So that's exactly, I'm not here to cut Scrum Master's job, but not to, uh, also not to, my intention was not to say that, uh, you know, hey, just eliminate Scrum Master from the organization. No, it's, you're absolutely right. When our teams would take ownership of their work, right? And they are confident that um, this is what needs to be done out of each event and why we do it when they are, they feel that they have autonomy to say yes and no, to share their uh, true opinions, true thoughts, uh, is when I feel that we have that culture established, we have coached them, uh, the agile principles, values, and they have developed that mindset. Absolutely. A great way to describe it. Thank you very much, Ruta. Thank you. Hi there, Agile friends. Thank you for sticking around to know more about this year's Agile Online Summit. The summit will have four keynotes and four tracks you will not want to miss. The keynotes will touch on critical topics for us, from delivering on time to helping you to focus on sustainability. The four tracks are tools, so we'll focus on tools you need to excel at your job, but also your mission. We'll also have a track on sustainability, which is, of course, about people and their sustainable pace, but it's also about how do we bring sustainability to the products and the planet we inhabit. We'll have a third track about happiness, talking about doing what we love and, most crucially, loving what we do. And finally, the fourth track will be live. It will be mostly hands-on sessions to help you roll up your sleeves together with the presenters. Oh, and we will also have a coaching clinic, as we usually do, organized to help you discuss and get inspired to solve the hardest challenges you face at work. This year, we'll have a special emphasis on interaction with your peers, so get your ticket and join the Slack at bit.ly forward slash AOS 2022. As always, we have free tickets for anyone that wants to attend live and the VIP tickets for those of you who want to keep the videos forever. So check them out at bit.ly forward slash AOS 2022. I'll see you on the conference floor. Part of a successful Scrum Master job is to help the product owner. Tomorrow we explore that critical role in Scrum, the product owner role. Tune in to learn about product owner anti-patterns, what you can do to help the product owner, and a real-life example of what a great product owner is and what made it so. Tomorrow on our Friday product owner episode. See you tomorrow. We really hope you liked our show. And if you did, why not rate this podcast on Stitcher or iTunes? Share this podcast and let other Scrum Masters know about this valuable resource for their work. Remember that sharing is caring.